Hi friends. If you want to see what my top picks are for best brushes of 2019, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, stick your head over to my Instagram. Rounding up my favorite brushes from the year was quite challenging, but here we are. I have to say this year was one that I dove in deeply into brushes. Different brands, different designs, different types, and I think I have a better handle now on the different brush types, what they're designed to do, the different type of bristles, because before I think I was treading lightly and I finally understood what a beautifully designed and crafted brush can do. Now I'm specifically talking about Fude, Brushes made in Japan. I believe it was 2017 that I first bought my Wayne Goss brush set, the Anniversary 2. And from then, it was a wrap. And ever since then, I tried Hakuhodo, Sonya G, Chikohodo, and Refer. Definitely 2019 was the year of Refer for me in terms of what they released, their whole concept behind the online shop with their feedback system and how the feedback itself from the community, from consumers, beauty enthusiasts, and professionals alike influenced the design of their brushes. From Sonia G, whose intuitive and thoughtful designs just have an immense impact on the brush lover's life. Wayne Goss, of course, stand out no matter what. Hakuhodo, can't get enough. And the Chica Hoda brushes, I mean, sublime. So it was really hard for me to pick my top, top favorite. And like all my favorite videos, I think I will do for 2019, just because I don't mention said brush or what have you that you've seen before in other videos, doesn't mean that I don't love it and that it does not play a vital role in my collection. These for me are stand out because it's just more than the design. It's my first impression is my experience every time I use them. It's just the overall story and craftsmanship behind each of these brushes that I feel deem them worthy for best of 2019. And what better way to start than with foundation. Last year's brush was the Zoeva Face Shape Brush in 110. This is actually one of Lisa Eldridge's favorite foundation brushes. I believe this is all synthetic and I highly recommend Zoeva for a more inexpensive brand for anyone who's looking to start their brush kit or just they are in need of brushes that are not going to break the bank. This year, however, I have two. I have a synthetic brush and I have a natural hair brush. The best foundation brush for me, 2019, without a doubt, is Wayne Goss's 24S Synthetic fan brush. This brush is synthetic bristle that they are specially designed and made in Japan. This is an immaculate type of bristle that is very hard to find, very hard to make, and hand bundle. Despite the fact that these are synthetic fibers, they're still hand bundled just like a natural hair brush would be designed and crafted, which is why it makes it really special. And the fact that it's a fan shape, I feel just makes it ideal for foundation application. It's the perfect density, it's the perfect size. Because I am a great believer of sunscreen as primer, to be under your foundation, I don't want to dismantle the shield, so I use this brush to pat in my foundation and it applies and blends beautifully. It's very soft, very light on the skin, but it does an amazing job blending out foundation, not only liquid, but cream as well. Also, if you are a user of cream contour, this is beyond ideal deal for cream contour. I mean, the fan shape just makes it intuitive to use for the hollows of the cheeks. You can even blend around your hairline. You can lightly brush down the bridges of your nose, the jawline, perfect shape for this. So this was for me a must-have standout brush for foundation in 2019. And my favorite natural hair brush for foundation. I actually have a clip on here to show you because since I'm not out and about, I was not as careful with applying. So I was applying with buffing motion, circular motions that I feel is ideal with this brush. I have to introduce you the Chikohodo GSN-02. First of all, the design of this brush is just beautiful. The gold ferrule with the pearl white tapered handle. This is all natural bristles, but unlike any round brush I've seen, the density is just 
beautifully divine. And the way it buffs foundation into the skin, incredibly soft, it leaves behind the most silky finish, let me tell you. And if I'm a little more careful on a real life situation where I have to make sure my sunscreen does not have spotty protection, even just pressing the foundation in like so lends a beautiful blend. This brush alongside the Wayne brush, I mean, must have foundation brushes for me. So you have the synthetic option and then you have the natural hair option. Natural hair for foundation sometimes could be tricky because natural hair fibers absorb more product than synthetic fibers do. And for someone who is looking for a higher coverage or looking for a higher coverage on the spectrum for your foundation, that's why people tend to lean more towards synthetic. And also it's easier to clean because again, the synthetic fibers are not going to absorb as much product. But natural hair, I feel is ideal for that person who wants more of a medium coverage, light to medium dare I say, but it's going to leave behind the most natural skin-like finish and they want the bristles on purpose to absorb some of the products so it does not lay heavy on the skin and that's why I would suggest in any of those circumstances to definitely reach for a natural hair brush over a synthetic one. But it all depends on you and the finish and the product that you are using but for me bouncing between these two must-haves. Now for this next brush, dare I say if I were to award the best of the best out of all the best brushes I'm presenting in this video, when I first used this brush, I knew before going in that it was going to be sublime. Before I even used it, I knew it was going to be a life-changing experience. Chikohoto's Z-Series well known for their premium fibers, their just beautifully designed handles, the blue squirrel fibers that they use. I mean, soft. And during the Beautylish gift card event, they were very nice enough to send me this brush to just give you recommendations from what Beautylish has to offer. I requested that they send me the Z8 cheek brush. Friends, if there is not I can't even, I'm at loss for words. The softness of this brush, and let me explain. Chikohoto, Japanese made, Blue Squirrel, one of the finest and most just divine fibers you could ever have in a brush. The reason why Blue Squirrel is just very helpful for those with sensitive skin. Sometimes a brush feels rough on the skin and it could cause irritation. If you found that every time you apply your loose powder, your blush, your highlighter, your powder contour, and when you apply it over your foundation, it disturbs the foundation, moves around the product, and you're left with a muddy texture and just uneven finish, this is the brush and the size of it is ideal for multiple products. It's slightly tapered, but it's just dense enough to pick up the right amount of product. I didn't set my foundation today. I applied a little bit of the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue, something like that. 122 medium tan mixed with the little spot of the hourglass vanish liquid foundation in honey i didn't set it i just kind of worked it in actually with my gsn2 and then i applied the linda halberg infinity deep palette the umbra and i believe the other beigey pinky shade applied over my foundation beautifully it just glides over the skin and again you could use so many cheek products with this brush you could apply your bronzer your contour your blush it's just beautifully immaculate for blush and for highlight, if you just want a soft wash of highlight, the tapered bristles, you could just pick the product up right here and it'll deliver it precisely still despite the size of the brush. I can't even begin to tell you. It's just life-changing. The feel of it, the experience of it all, it's hard to go back. It's hard to go back. When you experience a brush from the Chikohoto Z series, it's like, why, why use you why use anything else why and it's not just the feel your makeup looks significantly better it does and sometimes it's hard to tell on camera sometimes because i am far away you can't see my skin up close i am in front of natural light so it does have some sort of very light blurring effect but in person i've received several compliments about how despite how much makeup I have on, because when I tell them how much makeup I have on, they cannot believe it. You have makeup on, but it looks so natural. It's the brush, 
the brush. I still want the Z1. I am still gung-ho about Z1. She will be mine soon. But if you were trying to decide between one brush, because these are quite expensive, they are an investment, but they last forever. You just take care of them and wash them once a month, they'll be fine. If I were to recommend one brush to pick out, because when it comes to very expensive Japanese brushes, you want one that's going to be multitasking, that you can do several tasks with and not have to reach for different brushes, right? You want your money to go a long way when it comes to these tools. I will recommend the Z8 because it's just ideal not only for cheek products but loose powder application. Dare I suggest under the eye. Again, because of its tapered shape, it nudges right under there beautifully. You could even apply nose contour lightly under the lip, jawline, buff in loose powder. Forget it. Since this is squirrel hair, it's not going to pick up as much as goat hair. So I would also suggest this brush for those who want to be a little more light handed with their cheek products, especially with bronzer or with blush. If you have a hard time with blush and it always looks clownish no matter what brush you use, squirrel hair will change your life. Next up, I have to show you and Sony G Sky Set for face and eye will be returning in 2020. We don't know specifically when during the year, but they are not limited edition. I know they sold out so fast and everyone is like, when are they coming back? They are coming back. And Sonia is so good about giving us those updates. So I will not worry and just save your money. Save your money for that restock. I have to give it to her soft cheek from her Sky Face Set. This freaking brush. And I will take this moment to also mention my answer when it comes to which do you choose? I get asked all the time, Sonia, Wayne, or Refer Elise, or Chikohoro. Sonia is just someone who is so thoughtful in her design. It's one of those things when you use her tools, you immediately understand why she designed it the way she did. You immediately understand why the brush density, why the brush length. You understand its role because even though she's not a makeup artist, she's still bought so many brushes and has such an in-depth experience with them that she could just tell you to the very minute detail why the brush is designed the way that it is. And I would highly recommend that you check out her blog, SweetMakeupTemptations.com, the way she describes these brushes. I mean, she brings the brush to life through a computer screen is amazing. And it really just gives you a more real life experience of what to expect when you actually get the brush. And she's just so passionate about it. She's just so passionate about her brush making, brushes in general, that you just wanna be a part of that. And anytime she releases something new, I know I have to have it, and I'm never disappointed. I'm never disappointed because she makes things for a reason, and you know you're gonna be in good hands. And at the end of the day, if you are deciding between all these different brands, Sonia will never let you down. I mean, if you want something that's just so thoughtfully curated, and just comes from someone who has just a high level of passion for food day, then I would say go Sonia all the way. Now in specific, her soft cheek brush, another multifunctional brush that I feel is just crucial if you're choosing one and not wanting to buy the whole set. The length of this brush just makes it ideal for buffing out product, which I forgot to mention is also super great for the Z8 as well. To buff out product once you've applied all your cheek products, to buff in loose powder, dare I say you could even lightly dust loose powder under the eyes. Super great for contour or bronzer. Look how just beautifully it fits in the hollows of your cheeks. Blush, blush, are you kidding me? It just buffs beautifully. Even though it's domed, it still has some tapered shape to it that you could technically apply your highlighter with it as well. And the softness of it, this is dyed goat hair. And I can't even, I can't, even put into words how feather light and silky this brush feels. It's not so dense or not so loosey-goosey that it's just useless. <laughs> it's the perfect density and the perfect brush length and it's gorgeous. I mean, look at this, look at this brush handle. The brush handle is blue. I feel just ideal for someone who loves blue. And again, this set is coming back, but out of all the brushes, because all five brushes are divine. Soft Cheek is my favorite, and not only in the brush head's design, but just how beautifully it could perform an array of tasks for your complexion routine. 
stand out. Next up, I have to share, we're still in the Sonia train. <sighs> Her designer pro this little brush is so multitasking i have you noticed a trend here with me and multitasking brushes <laughs> the brush head is also dyed goat hair it is tapered and pinched at the ferrule so it has like that pinch shape which makes it super ideal for under eye light powder application i applied my highlighter with this brush today and it just applies it so lightweight and feather light is beautiful so soft beautifully to buff out your cheek products with beautiful if you just want a more precise application of contour you could use this to beautifully apply your contour you could even use this under the jawline down the bridge of the nose it just has so many roles. It could cover so many roles that you can you cannot go wrong. You cannot go wrong. And again, so intuitive in design. Like once you've tried it and you felt it on your face, it kind of just guides you just by its shape alone where on your face this can perform beautifully on. And again, I just love that I could use this under my eyes. I could use this for highlighter. I always have a towel on hand so I could switch between products. I love this also for blush. I love this for a more, again, precise application of contour. Bronzer, dare I say, you can hit it up with the bronzer as well. I was a little too dark, hello there. An amazing brush, so beautifully designed. Here is the soft cheek with the Designer Pro. I love the blue over the red, but the red is nothing to scoff at either, friends. I mean, this red shade is absolutely gorgeous and I love the tapered handle, but Designer Pro definitely had to be in my best of 2019 because this, this little brush, beyond. Let's take a break from Sonia. We're going to revisit her in a minute. Although this brush is not available individually, I believe Hakuhoro does have several different fan brushes on their website. This is from their holiday 2019 set, their fan brush. This is a mixture of squirrel and goat hair. It's like the wispiness is just so featherweight. The way the bristles splay out, but they're still like in a beautifully shaped array. It's like, I can't even, I don't, eh. when I apply loose powder, the way it just gets it on my face quickly is so efficient with that roll, so efficient. Beautifully perfect if you just want a very lightweight dose of bridge contour, I think the bristles are ideal for that application because it's not gonna pack on a lot of product. I love you could also apply blush. Blush is beautiful with this brush because the way the fan is designed, it just covers the perfect amount of skin for your cheeks. You could also use this for bronzer as I have. You just make sure you put it more here on the bristles because it is lightly tapered. Even given the density, it's going to deliver the right amount of bronzer. More lightweight if you're not into like a lot of bronzer. Sorry, I'm trying to like, ugh. More lightweight in application, especially if you're not crazy about bronzer in the first place and you feel that it always looks heavy on your cheeks. This delivers a more lightweight application than a denser bronzer brush. And I think it's just a great opportunity to experience another brush and another delivery of texture in terms of being it more lightweight and not as color rich. Amazing brush. I love this brush and it's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. It's so unique and it's just, I just, it's so special. So special. And the fact that it's both squirrel and goat hair, that mixture, man, is just the best because you get the grab power from the goat hair bristle, but then you get the wispy, lightweight application power of the blue squirrel, and it's just like the perfect match. The perfect match. That's why I want that silver fox hair set from Chikahoto because silver fox hair, according to the website, silver fox has like, it has the workhorse power of a goat hair bristle, but like the blend power of squirrel. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Definitely have to talk about the Refer Bronzer Brush. Now this is often, very often compared to the Tom Ford Brush. I believe this is the natural hair version because I got this a few years ago at Bloomingdale's and it definitely feels like it is natural hair. This is the Refer Brush and upon seeing them together, they look identical, right? I believe though the Refer one, which is here, is a little more wispy and you see that it has a little more taper to it, that it comes just to more of a point than the Tom Ford brush does. The Tom Ford brush has a little more dome to it. 
if you can see that, I feel anyway. And I also think the refer moves a little bit better. It's a little more wispy and feel and application, whereas the Tom Ford brush is a little more dense. I prefer the refer brush, and this is just preference, right? Some people like a more denser brush, and if you do, then I would then recommend the Tom Ford brush over the refer brush. I don't know now because I believe this brush is now made with synthetic hair and the price remained the same. <laughs> If you have the original Tom Ford, then no, you technically don't need the refer bronzer, but if you wanted to get your hands on the Tom Ford, but you don't want synthetic, this brush I had to include in Best of 2019. I mean, can you just, a better bronzer brush than this? And I have a lot of favorites for bronzer, absolutely. Sonia's Face Pro, are you kidding me? Please. I think that was maybe my last year pick or even her sculpt one. Her big fan brush, ideal for bronzer application. There's just something about using a big, dense, fluffy brush for bronzer. It's just like something you have to do at least once a week. And it just pats in the powder beautifully, beautifully. I mean, sometimes they just do this and it blends. I don't even have to do swoopies or circular motions or whatever. I just do the pat and it's done. It's done. So incredibly soft, silky on the skin. You could even use this to buff out your cheek products. You could even use this to apply loose powder. I think this might be a little dense for buffing. I would use something more lightweight like the Soft Cheek, the Hakuhoro, or even the Z8. But for bronzer, forget it. And I love the compact design. Small handle, gold ferrule. It's a beautifully designed brush. It's just, just handy. Just a handy bronzer brush. It's expensive. It's $100, but... These are premium grade goat hairs and look how many of them are in here, okay? Hand bundled. That's a deal. Are you kidding me? Next up, we're winding down with the face brushes. I have to give it to Sonia again. Her mini cheek from her Sky face set. Like, this is like, I feel, the perfect marriage between a tapered highlighter brush and a fan brush. Some people are fan brush all the way when it comes to highlighter application and some people like, can't stand fan brushes, give me a tapered brush. I feel this is the best of both worlds because it's not completely tapered and it's not completely fanned out either, but there is some width to this that I feel just lends maybe somewhat of a fan brush experience, just a touch of it but then you could also lay it down like you would with a tapered brush and turn it on the edge and then wisp away. Like this is beyond soft. Dare I say, you could use this for your nose contour. You could use this to blend out the very top edges of your eyeshadow even. This is a mixture of dyed and undyed goat hair, which makes it just sublime in texture and feel. And like, look at this. Look how these bristles move. You cannot get better than this. It's just so beautifully soft and I love it for highlight. Sometimes I don't even apply like this. This brush is so soft and of course is very helpful to use a product that is beautifully formulated as well. But I sometimes just pat down the highlighter and you're done. I blow myself away each and every time. This mini cheek brush, are you kidding me? Forget it. Must have highlighter brush, I feel, when these become available individually. Definitely worth a look at. Last complexion brush. Now, this is hot synthetic brush. Look at me. When Fenty Beauty released their concealers, they also released, I believe, two brushes. This is Fenty Beauty's 180 concealer brush. I think Rihanna calls this her paw brush because if you look at the head, it's tapered. It's like edged off and it's like a paw. It's like a little paw and I think it's perfect for blending out your concealer. Despite its size, because initially I was like, that's gonna take me forever to use and blend out my concealer with. No, it actually takes very little time. I would say don't use like the whole tube of concealer as some people do. Maybe just use a sponge instead. But if you're like me and have been using less and less concealer, I think this is a perfect brush size and design to blend it out. Very soft. And again, the way it's designed, I feel it just makes it ideal to blend out concealer under the eyes. You can nudge it right here under the lash line and 
beautiful blending. I really like this concealer brush. I always go back to it. I rotate between a couple, but this one for me, I thought it was stand out for 2019 with concealer. Eye brushes. Oh my goodness. Okay. 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 I have some here. One, two, three, four, five. I have five. Not too bad. I think this is a reasonable amount. I have to give it to the refer number 15 brush. Wayne Goss number four will always be my favorite. Okay. That brush is in my heart forever. The number 15 for me was the brush that really made me understood how great refer is. Because after that, I was like, I just want all the brushes. Just send me all the brushes. The number 15 eyeshadow brush is a little more domed than your typical crease brush. And I like that. I don't know what it is. I just feel it's ideal for the outer V blend, even just a general lay down of transition throughout your crease, your eye socket. So incredibly soft. The way it moves and just blends powder on the eyes is sublime. Ugh, I can't get over it. And easy. I used this brush for the first time and I was like, wow, I didn't even have to do anything. I patted down the shadow and it was basically blended. I haven't experienced that in a long time. And all the eye brushes I then have since used from Refer, it was just the same thing for me. It was just the same experience. And the Refer number 15 was one of my most used favorite medium-sized crease brushes for 2019. I have to give it to Esum's G34. This was the year that I used Esum for the first time and what was I waiting for? I am dumb. This brush I love. This is a goat hair brush. It's not as soft as Sonia's brushes or even Wayne's goat brushes, but it's still soft. Like perspective is everything and let's not forget that this is still a good quality bristle. I love it that it's domed, but I love how fast it is. I use, I actually just applied my eye look that I have on today with just this brush. I swear, I use Linda's Infinity Deep Palette and I blended out the Umbra shade on my crease. I even took the side of the brush with the highlighter shimmer shade and brushed it across my lid. Done. This is a fast acting blender brush. I think this is the brush that you would have on hand when you apply, maybe use another brush to apply the first layer of your transition or maybe you're done with your eye look and you need to buff out the edges so it could appear more diffused. The G34 has to be it for you. I love it. It's so fast with the blending and just so easy. It glides on the skin beautifully. It's a little stiffer, just a touch just a touch stiffer than let's say uh, all of my bigger crease Hakuhodo, Wayne, or Sonia brushes, but I kind of like that. I kind of like that stiffness. I just feel it's better to move the product around, especially when it comes to your transition shade. It just gets it on there fast. And again, for the final diffusing blend, G34, you need to have it. Oh my goodness, Linda's Synthetic 304 brush. I love this with her crayons. This is a synthetic brush. It has like the duo dyed bristles. I love the shape of it. It's pinched at the ferrule, it's dome size, but this is a perfect density to blend out her crayons or any type of cream, liquid, shadow you wanna apply on your lid. It's so perfectly dense and it has the perfect amount of control. So you can take that medium and just whisk it on the lid and throughout your eye socket effortlessly. And again, with her crayons, I mean, this is the brush I reach for. And I could use any of my undyed goat hair brushes, but because it's synthetic, I want the synthetic bristles to leave most of the pigment on my lid and I don't want a natural hair bristle to pick it up. That's why I insist on using a synthetic brush when it comes to using blending out crayons or cream or moussey types of textures on my lid. This is a must get for me. If you are looking at Linda's brushes, I mean, her whole brush collection is gorgeous, but if you needed to pick one for the eyes, 304. Last two brushes, they're from Sonia's Sky Eye Set that will be returning in 2020, as I mentioned before. Don't know when, but just keep your eye out for the updates. Have to give it up to the mini booster. This is a dyed goat hair mini crease brush. Have you seen just the perfectly sized crease brush? For those who have small hooded eyes, let me tell you the cruciality, <laughs> new words, for you to have this brush, it just glides and just fits into the deepest socket line. It gets in there, it does not move your skin. This brush is beyond smooth. Look at that, look, look how it moves. On mature lids, 
optimal this brush you need this brush and for those who don't have mature lids this is perfect for that outer corner blend that is just elusive in terms of one day you're gonna nail it and one day we don't know you're gonna nail it every time with a mini booster absolutely perfect for lower lash line application if you don't want it to be super smoky but just the right amount of smoke this brush is for you. This is great also for inner corner highlight. This is great for the inner part of the eye. I mean, and again, the size and the softness, the texture of the brush, that's why I had to be on this list. And the last brush, the last brush that really led me to then do the smoky eyeshadow wing more often is again from Sonia Sky Set, her flat definer this freaking brush and again this is why I love Sonia so much you when you use this brush you understand why she picked the density and the brush head size that she did I don't know how she did it although the tip so thin it's not so flimsy that when you pull it across your lash line you're not gonna get no shadow you're gonna get the shadow there but just it looks smooth and flawless I always used to never put liner on my lash line because every time I wanted to blend it out the brush was either too rough or too big or took away too much product and didn't leave the liner behind and I had to keep going in back and forth between smudging smoking and applying this brush leaves the liner where it is but it just moves the pigments effortlessly across your lash line and it just gives you the most smooth smoky liner finish and I never used to do the smoky wing liner thing friends because every time I try to do it with eyeshadow I, I would it would just look bad it would look bad this though I don't even have to use my hand to pull lightly lightly on my lid I just kind of close and I just let the brush do its thing and I stamp a darker color along my lash line if I want a little more contrast there easy easy because again look at this freaking brush head look how perfect it is it's so gorgeous look at the glide look look at it see that even though it looks it has like a lot of flexibility it's still perfectly dense for the product pickup and the application I love my brushes. So that is it, my friends. Those are my top picks for best brushes of 2019. It was hard. It was hard to narrow it down to this list because I have so many favorites. I have so many favorites that I will continue to use. By no means will I ever just use these brushes. But if you had a hard time picking out what brush you wanted to try, wanted to buy, what have you, hopefully this kind of helped edit it down that list for you. And I'm so sorry that I'm behind on a lot of your brush questions on some of my other videos i'm trying to really keep up with my comments but if you have any questions specifically know you can either always comment down below or dm me through instagram and i'm trying to catch up with those as well but don't be a stranger reach out if you have any questions and yeah those are my top picks for 2019 i would love to know yours down below and what you have your eye on for 2020 and that my friends is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another review tutorial get ready with me or best of list take care and i'll see you again soon